Hey guys, welcome to Retro Crisis. For any of you that play CD-based games, such as the TurboGrafx CD, Sega Saturn or PlayStation 1, you'll notice that your game files tend to have this kind of structure. There's one .cue file or Q file, and then a whole host of .bin files. It's actually possible to compress all of these files into one file, known as a CHD file, which means compressed hunks of data. So having a .chd file not only allows you to kind of keep your collection a bit more cleaner by just having one file per game rather than loads, one of the byproducts of having a game as a CHD file, there's potential for the overall file size to be smaller. And this entire process is done using an app called CHD Man. I'll show you how it's done. Firstly, go to the description and click the download link. And that will take you to this page here. And go to this section where it says software. And you'll notice instructions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. In this video, I'll be focusing on Windows. Go down slightly and click on the chdman.zip file and download it. Once you've extracted it, you'll find six files that look like this. Now, all you need to do is copy these chdman files over to your game folder. And then once you've done that, you want to find this file, which says cue gdiiso 2 chd This is a script that triggers a process that allows you to convert CUE files, GDI files, and ISO files to CHD. And to begin the process, just double click. And a new black box will open, and you just need to wait for the process to finish. And once the process has completed, the black box will close by itself, and you'll be left with this file here, which you'll see the game's name .chd. Now I'm just going to quickly delete all of the chd man files that I originally copied over. So that's these six files here. Let's just delete those. And now let's do a file size comparison. And the original files were 462 megabytes. And now our new compressed chd file is 274 megabytes. Now while some of you might be wondering who cares about a couple of hundred megabytes, I can imagine this process would be useful for people that have huge libraries of games. Now before I end this video, I'm going to test the CHD file to see if it actually works in an emulator. And there we go, the game is working successfully. I can't stress enough, if you do decide to go ahead and convert your games into CHD files, just please do test them before deleting the original Q and bin files, because the last thing you want to do is have a corrupted CHD file, and then nothing to go back to. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.